Before we get started with today's video, don't forget about the giveaway. A complete AN 8009 multimeter kit. It's being sponsored by Banggood and it is available to subscribers to this channel anywhere on earth that Banggood delivers. So all you need to do is watch the video for the giveaway down below and comment on it and on September 3rd which is Labor Day here in the United States we will draw the winner and our good friends at Banggood will ship it out to you. Don't forget check the link, enter the contest, good luck to you, big thanks to Banggood. Now to today's video. Hey what's happening guys, I'm going to do just a quick video on this circuit today because I think it's going to help a lot of you guys that have questions regarding I need an oscillator at X frequency and you know there's tons of ways to do it my oscillator uh, playlist I think has over eight different oscillators in it everything from relaxation oscillators to 555 square wave generators sine wave generators but <clears throat> it all develop or it revolves a lot around finding um, the precise resistors and capacitors you need for the RC timing circuit and of course those resistors and capacitors can drift with temperature even a simple 555 square wave generator that 555 timer will drift with temperature as well so what we've got here is just a really neat circuit based on a CD 4060 BE and a CD 4040 BE and a crystal zoom in here a little bit don't worry we'll talk more about the circuit what I want to point out first of all is this little whoa hello focus there we go this little crystal here this is what's commonly known as a watch crystal it is a uh, 32.768 kilohertz and what's nice about that is if you start dividing 32.768 kilohertz by 2 you eventually get down to one hertz and it works out really nice so uh, this this circuit is based on the CD 4060 BE which is a 14 stage ripple counter let's just call it it's a frequency divider okay it's really simple supply voltage here ground here external capacitor resistor here and your clock signal goes in pin 11 that's the drawing of a clock in case you're worried now the outputs on these are Schmidt trigger outputs so your clock signal can be a nice digital square wave a pseudo digital triangle wave or a most certainly analog sine wave the Schmidt trigger will whack them into shape right quick so it has um, up to 14 Q outputs again these are in, uh, Schmidt inverter outputs and each one just divides by a certain number for instance I just wrote these down quickly here because they're almost in order pins 13 14 and 15 which are actually Q9 Q8 and Q10 I, why couldn't they just keep everything in order? Let me look at this. 13 is the smallest number. That goes to Q8. 14 goes to Q9. 15 goes to Q10. We got to mess things up anyway. But they simply work out to divide by 5 or divide by 256, 512, and 1024. It's a beautiful thing. It works out so easy. So I got it hooked up here. We'll put. 9 volt on it and we have a 1 hertz signal flashing right there power up the oscilloscope here and I think we get a kick out of this connect our ground first and the oscilloscope my new 01 XDS 21 O2A, that's a 12 bit oscilloscope. We're nice and powered up now. And if I probe 
the one hertz we should get a one hertz signal here if my oscilloscope decides it likes it come on oscilloscope wake up find that one hertz signal huh one moment all right well one hertz it doesn't want to lock on Let's try if we go up here, we'll skip a couple, we'll go to 32 hertz. There we go. Now, where <laughs> did my frequency go? Oh my, hold on a second. I'm just learning this new scope. It's a little tricky. Okay, there we go. So we've got our frequency, 32 0.01 megahertz. We go up here's 128. You see us locking on nicely. There's 256, 1024. Nice square waves coming out of that too. <clears throat> Somebody said they needed a two hertz, I think, or no, was it two kilohertz? Two kilohertz. So there's two kilohertz real nice and if we roll back down to here you can take a look at all of the different levels that are available here this is the fastest two kilohertz and if we go all the way down to the slowest it's the reciprocal one over two kilohertz so that's pretty slow this is a neat board. You can make this circuit yourself. I mean, if we take a look at this, there's not a whole lot going on here. We've got our 4060, and it's also using the 4040 as just a second stage counter. If you don't need all those, you can definitely get by with the 4060. We have our uh, Watch Crystal 32.768 kilohertz with its supporting capacitors. We have our C capacitor here. We have our two T capacitors here. And uh, these are just for smoothing. That's really there's all there is to it. This is a, a very simple circuit. I will put the block diagram for this uh, chip up on the screen right now so you can see it. And... Uh, and again, this is just a really simple, a simple circuit, a simple board. I bought this off of Amazon. I'll throw it in my store if you guys are interested. I mean, really, you could build this yourself. I just didn't feel like building anything myself. But I wanted to answer those questions about how you can get a really nice, stable timing source. And it's using that 4060 and uh, a watch crystal. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. That's it. I'm out. Peace.